Hi, welcome. Um, as you can see, this is a talk on uh, trust and security in the cloud. My name is Sean Mullen. I'm from IBM. I'm the I'm a uh, cloud security architect. I think there's chairs pretty much on this side. So we kind of want to make this interactive. I mean, it's it's a small room. It's it's a technical talk. So I I'm going to invite you if you have questions as we go along. Just just shout out and we'll address them. Either we can answer it or maybe somebody in the room even knows. All right. So this is. Let me go through a little bit of our architecture. So this is what we built. It's hosted, managed, private cloud. We have a great IBM name for it called ICOS, a pronounceable acronym. Uh, IBM OpenStack Cloud Services. We released this uh, about a year ago. And we added um, the trust and integrity technology from Intel, the TPM TXT, um, about June. So but the general architecture of this is when you pick up the phone and you order, our, I need an ICOS IBM, right? So we have to build this out, and it starts with three controller nodes, right? This is a HA proxy, so the three controller nodes give us the high availability. It gives us all of the OpenStack components, right? Your Nova Neutrons, things like that. Um, Cupid, you can see the list there. So in this p picture here, big, big squares are bare metal systems. And the little ones are VMs, right? And then we have, you can kind of see there in the corner, we have, you know, Viata, uh, dedicated Viata gateways on this. And you can see our Ceph uh, block storage and uh, our Swift object storage that comes with this. And then here is the compute nodes. So what the customer gets at the end of the day is a VPN into their uh, OpenStack dedicated. So if we were to look at a soft layer data center that's vast and we have all the bare metal systems and racks and everything like that in their true public cloud, what we do is we build out this private cloud. We carve that out and dedicate all these bare metal systems to the customer. They get to access Horizon and um, the OpenStack pieces, create their VMs and everything like that. So basically, it's a turnkey solution. And they just get to start using OpenStack and as many bare metal systems to run their VMs and workloads as, as they need to. And there's, there's chairs along there if you guys want to sit, sit down. We're going to go over about an hour, so you guys want to sit. OK, so here was our requirement. <coughs> so. We need to build this out, right? We have this, this public cloud, this public data center where there's a public soft layer, and we need to get our APIs and hit this and quickly build the architecture I just told you, right? So we need to do this rapidly in a very secure manner, not only accessing the firewalls, but hardening everything else around it. So once we do that, hosted, managed, private, it's dedicated to that customer in the public side cannot get to it, right? So we have to make sure the security is in there. And then we're gonna, as we go along through this with the demo and, and what Ravi's going to talk about is how we embed some very uh, hardware-based security, some of the leading edge security around this. OK. So here's kind of the picture. Multiple customer private clouds in there. Right, so there's our little customers. They access through the, the VPN. We have a single central management. That's the piece. It's basically two uh, bare metal systems that run everything to call the soft layer APIs to acquire the hard layer, and then it starts layering OpenStack on top and everything like that. And again, there's chairs down in front if you guys want to make your way. And we have the support team kind of around the world. So we kind of get 24-hour coverage with this. And they're basically monitoring everything. And, and if there's a security patch, they add that in and things like that. So you know, I think it's a, to me, it seems like a fairly standard deployment. I'm going to go back to this one more time. Bare metal systems. But you see all these VMs in there. How do we make sure those VMs are secure? We start with as what a lot of people call that secure golden image. 
we happen to call ours Lucy because it's the genesis of everything else, just like the Serengeti Lucy, right? So we take a single image and we harden that image and then we stamp every VM with the Lucy image. So we know it's hardened to, in, in our case, it's uh, I, IBM's uh, ITCS 104 and um, it's basically a compliance standard. It's your typical thing, right? It's, you know, password hygiene, how often you've got to change your password, locking down ports, everything like that. And I'll go into a little bit of how we do that. And we use a standard out there from the open group called OASML. And the ASML is Automated Compliance Expert Markup Language. So the deal is, no, I, gotta, I, gotta, I wanna, don't want to talk ahead of my slide. So we've, we did it with the IBM standard. We also did it with um, PCI, HIPAA. We kind of have those in our back pocket. We're not, we haven't deployed those yet. But the idea is if you look at a compliance standard, it comes in a PDF format. And then you've got to read the PDF, and it says, set your password length to 8. Change your passwords every single But it's human readable. So you've got to go, and you've got to configure all of that. Well, what we did is we took the human readable part, and we put it in XML. So you see, like PCI, section 8.3.2, your password length needs to be 8 or greater. And then we put in this OASML, in the template, it's kind of a keyword like password, security, dot length, and then the argument 8. And that's all, the th that's all that's in the ASML template. It doesn't tell it how to do it. But the idea is you can take that template in any device that's ASML aware, any device that's ASML aware is you push the template onto it. Ubuntu, Red Hat, Toaster Oven, and it gets that and it goes, oh, I know how to set my password length to eight, and this is how I do it. But what it does, it writes that back into the XML. So human readable and a keyword, the device itself that's being applied that writes it back into the XML. So what we have now is the human readable part, how the device implemented it on the device, and its success or failure. So it's complete compliance auditor ready. So you can export this into an Excel spreadsheet or report or anything like that. The compliance guy knocks on your door and you have everything. We put it in Logstash and we can run it in a check mode to make sure it's still doing that way. So you can push the template and say, set yourself to this, Ubuntu or toaster oven, or you can push it to that device and you can say, just report on yourself. But we get that report back, we compare it to the baseline, we make sure there's no mistakes, we push it into Logstash, the auditor comes, and we have all of the artifacts to help pass our compliance. And this is where you, were you going to talk here, Ravi? Okay. So just real quick, so the next thing that we added in uh, June of this year was SoftLayer runs on, on Intel with TXT. It has the TPM technology. I like to say uh, the Trusted Platform module is a brand new technology that's 20 years old, right? And I'll tell you, I've been doing the TPM stuff for a long time. And here was the issue with it. It's hard to use. There's a little bit of difficulty on understanding it and everything like that. So we would offer customers, and this was your traditional environment, your enterprise where they owned it, and they would look at the TPM stuff and they'd go, wow, that is so secure. We love it. It's great. But I don't have the bandwidth to monitor it and understand it. I'd have to have personnel on this. And what happened with the cloud is that all shifted. Since we are the hosted managed private cloud, we can integrate it in. Our staff monitors it, makes sure all the systems are secure and everything like that, giving you the security and the boundary control and additional compliance and reporting. So now we'll get into detail. Thank you, Chuck. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ravi Varanasi. I'm the GM for Data Center and Cloud Security. Um, Sean definitely um, laid the use case and actually brought out the fact that for hosted, dedicated private cloud environment, 
or for any hybrid environments. Security assurance is a catalog offering that enterprise that uses the IBM cloud will actually be assured of. And this assurance can come from a hardware route of trust that cannot be tampered with in a way you can verify not just the boot process, but from the boot process through the bare, bare metal OS or the virtual machines and the hypervisor and all the way to the application. So how can we ensure and verify that? Can you hear me now? This is worse or better? Worse. Yeah. OK. I'll just leave it there. All right. So with that in mind, I'll quickly mention that in terms of the prioritized security use cases, we heard from multiple customers, especially cloud service providers and enterprise, and how you can orchestrate this open stack, information security, and how you maintain control of data, even if it's in a third party environment, with the keys still staying in the control of the tenant or the enterprise. So that's the critical piece, and that's one thing we solve jointly with IBM in the in-flight data at rest and data in use, essentially data in memory where you actually encrypt data or create some types of enclaves protected by the processor. Now, the second and the most important piece Sean mentioned here is chain of trust. So this is where we talk about trust and attestation. Can you hear me? Why don't you try that other one again? Maybe he's hooked it up now. Don't worry, otherwise I'll start shouting. There you go. The second priority we talked about is the chain of trust, starting from the boot process initiated by TXT TPM. Yes, Sean can certify that TXT was hard to configure. The reason is you had to actually go touch every server and change the BIOS settings. That doesn't fly when customers ask for trusted compute, trusted network, and trusted uh, storage as their use cases, and we just view TXT as a component. So cloud integrity technology, the software layer that gets orchestrated by OpenStack, multiple schedulers of OpenStack for whether you're talking about compute network or storage, and hides the details of TXT, TPM, and the hardware under it, but provides you the trusted use case. That flew well with the customers of IBM SoftLayer. So and I'll talk to you about that. And the last one is about secure NFV. When you have SDN and controllers, obviously with the OpenStack, Neutron, and other uh, sessions that you had, the moment we sacrifice control or something happens where you lose control on the SDN interfaces or controllers themselves, you can bypass the firewall, you can bypass many configuration scripts. So essentially, assuring integrity of the controllers on SDN while also ensuring that the NFV functions, whether it's a virtual firewall, virtual switch or a load balancer, all of these come up with integrity checked. That is the use case people were asking us for with hardware assurance from the network. So these are the things we will touch upon in general, but let's focus on trust and attestation, which is the essence of today's topic. Assuring integrity of infrastructure, visibility of workloads. So what we heard most of the time is you don't want to move your workloads, whether it is containers or virtual machines into the cloud, just because there is no visibility, there is no traceability for trust. We don't know what's running out there, both in the VM environment and from the infrastructure perspective. So ensuring that right from the boot process is part of integrity assurance, hashing the images, hashing the boot images, hashing the virtual machines, hashing the hypervisors, and storing these hashes in TPM, specific PCR registers of TPM, and maintaining these as golden hashes somewhere else that you can verify with, that is the system. And that is what tries to make sure that you can have a dashboard from OpenStack that shows so-and-so image is trusted. You have a list and a report of what you think is assured of infrastructure and what you think is not. And if you know that a specific image is not trusted, you can initiate action to move that workload onto trusted infrastructure. So an OpenStack ironic in this case actually helps. 
So I'll touch upon that. So these are the problems, essentially visibility, confidentiality, and integrity. So once we delivered the trust attestation solution, the next question we were asked is, what about confidentiality? In OpenStack glance attributes, if you are actually in glance images, if you are storing a virtual machine, can we store it? So can we store that ISO in an encrypted form where the keys remain with the tenant? And when this image is loaded by Nova Scheduler into a hybrid environment, how do you bring that up with the keys shared by the owner at that point before decrypting the virtual machine and bring it, bringing it up in a hybrid or even a hosted private environment? So trust attestation along with Encryption and confidentiality is the new addition to this whole stack. So this uses Intel's ASNI, compression, crypto, and a few other hardware instructions to make sure that we guarantee this trust, we guarantee this encryption for you. And location and boundary controls, that's the third and most important piece. With asset tags that can be stored in the TPM, we have since IceHost release, for OpenStack, a filter, a scheduler filter for Nova that calls specific interfaces of cloud integrity technology on the IBM software environment. Whenever the virtual machine is being brought up, this filter gets called for location checks, for integrity checks, before Nova scheduler is allowed to bring up this workload on a stated server or in a stated location. So this plugin is available. It is waiting to be upstreamed since IceHouse. We, we crossed K and L releases, but it is available as of today if customers actually take it and load this plugin. But hopefully, this will get uh, integrated soon when the scheduler uh, features get opened up by OpenStack. So all of this is done with tamper-proof verifiable hardware. So these are the problems and solution for this is launching of the VMs and applications on servers with boot integrity and platform trust. So this is the trust chain I talked to you about, enhanced by the Nova Scheduler. And the second and important solution here is workload boundary control. When we say workloads, it doesn't have to be just the virtual machine. It is a container with apps embedded in it. So I'll talk to you about plugins for Docker, Mesos, Kubernetes, and many other uh, uh, plugin environments for containers as well. So the bare metal OS gets CIT, the cloud integrated technology, integrated in it by default. And then there is a plugin on top of that to take care of hypervisor and above to the application stack. So this is the same thing we do for container integrity. There's a session today uh, from Intel and uh, some of our uh, partners, I think around 5 o'clock, to go deep, uh, deeper into the container integrity session. So feel free to attend that. Thanks for your participation in the Birds of Feather this morning uh, when we discussed the container integrity and the problems that you brought out. And the last one, extending this chain to enterprise ownership where the keys remain in enterprise. You all heard of the safe harbor ruling in Europe. Uh, we heard about a few other uh, exposure uh, uh, elements that we had, especially on Amazon. Uh, this was about two weeks back, where L1 cache was used to copy the contents of the key and compromise the plain text keys through side channel attacks on virtual machines. And this was on Amazon uh, public cloud, just as an example. So there are two things we can do to solve that problem. One, the cache management technology on the Intel E5 version 3 processors helps you lock the cache line to specific virtual machines. So that prevents the side channel attacks. But from a typical Intel solution, we are not saying, OK, now go ahead and up upload all your processors with uh, the next version of uh, V3, right? libgcrypt is the best known method that we have. So if you load the right version of libgcrypt libraries, it 100% prevents the side channel attack without the processor actually taking care of the cache lines. So in the container environment, with trust and attestation, when you're loading libgcrypt, if libgcrypt is mentioned in your trust manifest file of the initram disk, I'll tell you that if you have questions about it later. But 
there is a method where we can enforce the right version of libgcrypt that needs to be loaded on this virtual machine before we allow the services to run. So typically, any Linux path, if I just pick Linux as an example, any Linux path name can be part of your trust manifest. It doesn't have to be just the boot process or the hypervisor. So if I say a path name and OVS, like open vSwitch, or a firewall environment, if that is mentioned in what we call a manifest file that is used as the master file for verifying any service or any daemon that gets loaded, we check the integrity of that service and we make sure that the code that is about to get loaded is known good integrity checked value. So this extends obviously to any Linux path and that's exactly what we mentioned here. In terms of the touch points, if you really look at the stack, we have to enable TXT TPM, which is by default there on the hardware, I assume. And then the bootloader, it's an open source T-boot environment that you can use. And the third touch point is within the OS, include the cloud integrity technology trust agent that comes free and by default in most cases. And the last but not the least is have this plugin in the open stack Nova Scheduler or an associated Cinder if you're talking about storage, relevant schedulers, and if it is network, obviously we have some plugins that we are working on for Neutron. So if you have these four touch points, where the fourth one is where actually you have to load this plugin, you're good to go with the whole chain of trust that takes you with trust attestation from the boot process with platform integrity through workload integrity and we actually are working on runtime integrity at this point, but as of today, we have solutions from platform all the way to workload integrity. And I wanted to mention this as just a small demo and a use case for you. We talked about trust, attestation, but this is boot up, right? With Docker and container environment, these containers move almost two or three times a day on a public and hybrid cloud environment from what we learned. So every time a container moves, these attestation checks are triggered. Now, in this particular case, an asset tag is nothing but a random number with the host UUID with a signature, all of which is combined to form an asset certificate. That's what we call an asset tag. And this tag gets loaded onto the TPM registers and also into the Intel Cloud Integrity Technology server that sits outside this particular server that is being protected. So the golden measurements, or what you call the reference hashes, are all in the Intel CIT server, and the asset tag is loaded into the TPM module. What does this give you? The asset tag can have location information. It can have even controlled app information that you want to. So you can overload this tag with anything. As far as Intel is concerned, it's a number. We use it for location controls today. So with GPS, RFID, or a system administrator configured input, you can tag a server saying this server belongs to the boundaries of this country. And if this server or the virtual server, physical or virtual, is moved outside the specific boundary, this tag check fails and the platform is not allowed to boot up in this case. Okay, so OpenStack Nova Scheduler with this plugin, before it launches the VM, checks the geo policies, and then verifies it with Intel CIT server before launching it. So let me just see if I can show you a one and a half minute uh, demo of how this video will demonstrate the control of workload placement in the cloud based on location policies. To begin, create the various tags that will be provisioned to each server. Here we create a country tag with possible values USA and Canada. Next, we create a selection of the specific tags that will be provisioned. In this case, we use the state tag and select California. The OpenStack hypervisors page has been modified to include a provisioning tool. Here we demonstrate provisioning a host with a selection of tags. This process writes tag information to the hardware. After rebooting the host, the provision tags are visible by hovering the mouse over the location icon. 
Once all hosts have been provisioned with the necessary tags, policies can be associated with image objects to define workload placement. In this example, we've defined a policy for the image SAP HANA California that will allow it to be launched exclusively on hosts provisioned with the SAP HANA and California tags. These tags correspond to the tags provisioned to host Havana AT Node 4. And we can see that the scheduler has launched the instance on the host that matches the policy requirement. If no hosts have tags matching the policy set on the image, as in this example, where we define a policy requiring both the Hadoop and California tags, the location policy will not allow the image instance to be launched. Since no hosts have been provisioned with both the tags defined in the policy, the instance is not launched. This concludes this demonstration of geotagging and boundary control in the cloud. So, let me just make sure, yeah. So what you have seen is using OpenStack dashboard, how you can enforce location controls on virtual machines and in container environment as well. So with that, let me just show you a couple of uh, slides here on uh, extending this to the Docker containers. In addition to VMs, if you really look at the bare metal OS attestation, as part of the T-Boot plugin and the standard plugins, you can have this embedded within the bare metal OS. We're working with Docker on this, and that's being made default. So once that is in place, there is a virtual plugin called a Docker plugin that sits outside the context of the host OS within the Docker daemon in that context and helps you take this trust control to, say, for example, IBM WebSphere, just as an application running as a container, or any other apps running as containers within them. So this provides you two plugins here, one of them at the bare metal OS itself to take care of the platform and the OS environment, and the other plugin that sits slightly above the hypervisor, or in this case, the bare metal OS context, to help you attest containers and apps within the containers above. So this is something that uh, we'll, we will discuss a little bit more in detail at 5 o'clock today in the container section. But this is how you attest containers. And the last one I wanted to show you here is once you boot up the environment, if for some reason the platform gets compromised, Intel CIT would know that you lost trust of the specific platform and through some injected information into a monitoring virtual machine that could be on this platform or a different platform, this VM can trigger actions through these NOAA elements. In this case, let's talk about Ironic from OpenStack. You can actually use Ironic to move the virtual machine out of a trusted or an untrusted platform based on the policy. In this case, if it's untrusted, Ironic will help move this virtual machine out from that particular platform in question to a trusted environment. So even after things boot up, with OpenStack, whether it's Nova or Ironic or Cinder, if you're talking about storage, you will be able to look at and actually track the trust of the platforms and move your workloads out in case the platform becomes untrusted. So now I'll ask my colleagues here to do a live demo of what we are trying to do in the IBM environment. And uh, I'll give it off to Elvin here. Then we'll open up for questions. Thank Hi. you. <coughs> Hi. My name is Elvin. Uh, I helped uh, integrate uh, Intel's cloud integri integrity technology with IBM's ICOS. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is attempt to do a live demo of uh, launching a trusted image onto trusted hypervisor. But I guess before we get to that, let's talk about uh, the automation we did, um, because it's important to say that, uh, explain that uh, provisioning the TPM and then with OpenStack does have its uh, difficulties. Um, but then uh, I'll, I'll give a brief intro, uh, overview on how we did this. Um, so 
what we use here is Chef. Um, we use Chef to, uh, to, to install all the packages and uh, I guess uh, prepare the VMs for OpenStack. Um, so we have a Horizon VM and uh, we installed C the CIT attestation server um, along with Horizon. It's a Tomcat server. Um, and we also have to, I guess, add the Nova filter to uh, the list of filters for Nova. Um, so this particular Nova filter, uh, it gets the, uh, f it works in the schedule, it gets like the request to launch an image and it grabs the st statuses from, uh, from CIT at, at a station server and checks, oh, is this uh, a valid server to launch this VM on? Uh, if, it, if it doesn't, it errors out, as you saw before. If it does, um, if there's nothing wrong, then it goes and goes ahead and proceeds to launch it. Um, so we use Chef to, uh, I guess, uh, provision the servers. You want to talk about the trust agent? Uh, hi guys, my name is Michael. I'm also a software developer at IBM, and I also worked on uh, CIT integration. And in addition to uh, CIT server and um, uh, the tr uh, Nova trusted filters uh, the scheduler, um, we also install um, uh, Intel's actually uh, has some uh, extensions her to Horizon that we also install via automation uh, in Chef recipes, and um, also um, we. We added a uh, kind of a horizon panel that allows uh, the user to, to kind of see everything related to uh, um, TPM TXT on directly on horizon, so they don't have to go to a, a separate um, area to uh, view that information. And also on Nova machines, KVMs, we also installed Intel's CIT extensions on there as well to the API to allow for um, dis um, tr uh, trust trust tags. And um, also install trust agent to and uh, to allow the Novas or actually the CIT server to interact with the TPMs on the Nova Nova machines, Nova nodes. And um, as also we install a T boot to allow for asset tagging of the same uh, Nova nodes. And so now we're going to go to the live demo. No, and did you want to talk about Jenkins? Sure. Um, so the, the version of Chef uh, that we used didn't uh, allow automatic uh, reboots um, because uh, you, you have to, in order to build a trust from, from the boot process, you have to actually reboot the server. So we had to make Jenkins jobs to actually reboot the servers and install the things that we needed to. Um, I think for installing this particular uh, for, for one compute host, uh, it takes around two, two or three reboots to actually install things uh, properly. Uh, so we automated that through a Jenkins job. Um, and so what, what happens is uh, when a customer comes to us, they, they give us, I guess, tags that they want to give the compute host. And we, we provision the TPM, TM, TPMs to have the asset tag for them. Um, and this is the job that we use to push, to push the tags out. Um, and we also have a job uh, to back up the, I guess, the TPM data um, in case uh, the, the server crashes. And yeah, this data allows us to recover ownership of the TPMs after, say, an OS reload or some other, you know, disaster. Yeah. yeah. So now we're gonna go get to the, the live demo. Um, let's, but let's make sure we're actually authenticated um, because uh, we get left out all the time. Uh, hold it. Okay, so now we're going to show you a trusted image and also, or and just how we kind of extended the Horizon like uh, functionality to uh, create images and tag them. And so uh, we added this part down here where you can define a trust policy and also define a tag. Here you can see um, all the tag names, examples, and um, also 
the tag values. And in our case, this is the name of the KVM nodes. Um, and uh, so, okay, so now we're gonna launch uh, VM from the image. So what we have here is we have uh, a trusted images, the, the images that we define the policies for. Um, one is correctly tagged, uh, like one of the compute hosts actually have, has that tag. Um, and for the other image, it is tagged with uh, a tag that the compute hosts don't have. So, so one will fail and the other one will succeed. So what happens here is that we are build, now building the tag, um, the image, instance of image that um, has tags that, that match uh, one of the KVM nodes. So as you can see here, the, uh, the one with the correct tag is running, up and running as expected. And so uh, we'll now show you what happens when you launch from an uh, image that has uh, tags that don't match any of the, KVM no the ones on the KVM nodes. And so now, as you can see here, there's an error that pops up, and it says no valid host is found. So um, now we're going to show you our uh, the additional trust panel that we added to Horizon. And so this kind of uh, kind of gives you the basic information about each uh, KVM node. Um, as you can see here, the host name and the trust status, and just kind of just this is reporting back like the the as stations that a CIT server made. And so um, these are run uh, periodically. And so, um, as you can see, everything is trusted. No one's modified the BIOS or any of those uh, very important uh, parts of our bare metals. And um, here, uh, we also have uh, just tag tag names and values. Um, and um, and we'll uh, show you the trust report that you can download. And so, this shows you the last 90 days of AS stations. So, this will you know satisfy something like. Uh, kind of ITCS 104, kind of like one of those compliance things where they require you to have logs in 90 days of, you know, um, everything. And um, so, I think that concludes our demo. Uh, yeah, there's the demo. Um, and then I think we were gonna talk really fast about some difficulties that we had. Um, so, what happens since it's, uh, it's hardware is that you have to work with software um, to provision the TPM. Um, and so what happens is, uh, let's say you're trying to, you know, take ownership of the TPM. Oh and then you, uh, okay, that's, that's a lot better. And then you accidentally, like, deleted the password. You don't know what happened to it. So what happens is you need to open up a ticket and uh, they have to go into the BIOS and then they have to clear the TPM for you. So it's a, it's a real hassle. It sometimes takes like only an hour, sometimes it takes like five hours. So, you know, you don't want the customer to deal with that. So we'll do that for you. Um, and I guess uh, another thing was the OS reloads. And that's why we had that job to uh, back up the TPM data, so. Yeah, otherwise you would basically lose ownership of TPM because the T agent instance on those KVM nodes will also will be basically deleted with the OS reload. And so what would happen is that you have like ownership already taken of the TPM, but there's nothing to actually claim that ownership because the T agent was already uninstalled. And so what we did to work around with that was the, the Jenkins job that you, we saw earlier.
And um, that would basically it saves the, some values very securely, and um, kind of like uses those to recover TV ownership. Um, yeah. So, I think I think that's it. Um, I guess we can move on to questions. Yeah, we can open up for questions in case uh, we have anything for the IJ money EFT. Right. There's a mic right there, I think. Is this working? Yep. There's the one right there. Does that work? Oh yeah. Uh, does it work? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I had a question. Uh, you mentioned uh, in your slides that you detect changes um, and then you respond to those. Um, so are the changes, like what registers are you looking at? Are you just looking at the ones, so like a BIOS one is only on reboot? Do you only detect on reboot or are you doing other things at runtime? Quick answer to that is we detect and we actually look at the hash of the platform that includes not just you know components of BIOS, but the base OS, the virtual machine, or the hypervisor. So the combination of these things, or combination of these hashes, becomes a master hash that gets loaded into certain TPM registers like PCR19. So this value is checked against the golden value of what it needs to be and if that fails, then we consider the platform as out of trust needs or out of trust requirements. And at that point, CIT injects this message into this uh, monitoring VM that sits either on the current server or somewhere else to tell OpenStack Ironic in this case to initiate a virtual machine movement out of this trusted, untrusted platform. So essentially, the hash includes these components of the platform, and the combination of these hashes is loaded into the TPM's register, which is monitored by CIT from external environment. Sure. Um, so one of the things with the, the TPM is the hashes, right? They're very brittle. Are you guys doing any work to like maybe provide a library of different hashes or anything like that? Like, you know, in ICOS we manage that ourselves. But you, if you're from, if you're familiar with TPM stuff, right? The idea was everybody would publish their OS and say, "Here's the hashes," and you know, you're right. So if you have to update the kernel, your ch your hashes change and your whitelist changes because you get the hash from the TPM, you compare it to the known good whitelist. And you know, again, this goes back to the difficulty of managing it. That's why we do it in our solution because we know when we're updating the KVM, we know what the new whitelist is gonna look like. We can make sure it's a known uh, change as compared to the, the hash changed out of the blue and then we know it's some type of attack and we can mitigate it from there. So good question. Any other questions? All right, we'll be around in case we have some more. Thank you guys, so, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.